and today I'm sharing with you 35 cleaning tasks you must complete around your home throughout the entire year. Also, I am showing you exactly how to accomplish all of these tasks without feeling overwhelmed by providing you with free downloads which help guide you through scheduling these tasks. So stay tuned to the end as I show you in detail how to use these free downloads. On top of showing you how to get these tests done, I also show you how to clean your entire home with natural ingredients that I showed you in my previous video, along with some additional affordable natural cleaning recipes in today's video. Let's get started by quickly going through the five cleaning tasks you must do on a daily basis. Each person who is able makes their bed. All of you will feel accomplished first thing in the morning and motivated to be productive throughout the rest of the day. Having an empty sink and dishwasher will allow you to easily place dirty ones in so that they are not piling up in the sink and on the counter. Try to implement a rule where dirty dishes are not allowed to touch the bottom of the sink and must be placed directly in the dishwasher. And any dishes that must be hand washed are done immediately after use. Because folding the laundry can be the part that takes the longest to do, Doing laundry more frequently can help make the laundry more manageable. I try to wash as many dishes as I can while cooking. I also wash my burner pans and microwave plate along with my dishes if they are dirty too. And I clean the inside of the microwave as needed as I clean the counters. Did you know that cleaning your kitchen floors thoroughly every night keeps the rest of your floors, especially your carpets, from getting dirty? Cleaning your kitchen floor keeps grease and debris from being trapped throughout the rest of your home and forming any kind of buildup on your rugs. So don't worry about mopping the rest of your floors on a daily basis. Just get those kitchen floors clean. And one cleaning task that may seem like it has been left out of your daily cleaning schedule here is tidying up. One rule you can implement in your home is to never leave a room empty-handed. Everyone gets in the habit of looking around the room before they leave it and putting away anything that is out of place. Then each of you simply grabs anything that doesn't belong in that room and brings it to where it belongs. That way everyone is in the habit of keeping clutter at bay, making your home so much easier to keep clean and organized. Now, let's quickly go through six cleaning tasks you must do on a weekly basis. For each of the six tasks, you can choose one day a week to do each task, like Monday through Saturday, or you can do them all in one day a week, like Saturday. To remove dust from any nooks and crannies that are difficult to reach with a microfiber cloth, I first use a car detailing brush. I will share a link to all my favorite cleaning tools in the description box below. Then, I just grab the appropriate cleaning solutions and spots and get to dusting and polishing. Daily, you will clean your kitchen floor thoroughly. And once a week, you will clean the rest of your floors. I like to vacuum. Then, I clean the floors the same way I clean the kitchen floor. Finally, I follow with the microfiber mop, which has my all-purpose cleaning solution with peppermint essential oil. The mop polishes everything up and the peppermint keeps pests away. Because we are covering 35 cleaning tasks today, I will leave the link to my blog post which shares how I quickly clean my bathroom in detail from the shower to the toilet to the sink and everything in between. At least once a week, sweep away debris from your outside areas, including your porch, walkways, driveway, backyard seating areas, and tidy everything up. Setting aside time at least once a week to tidy up paperwork will keep your spaces from overflowing with paper clutter. I will link below to my ultimate guide to organizing your paperwork. If you don't do a load of laundry a day, as noted in my previous post, you can do all your laundry once a week. Now, let's get into eight cleaning tasks you must do on a monthly basis. You can choose one day a week to do one or two of these eight monthly tasks. This task is super important in order to keep your vacuum running efficiently. On most vacuums these days, directions for disassembling the brush roll and filters are directly on the vacuum. After removing the brush roll, you simply take a pair of scissors and snip the hair out of it. 
and after removing the filters, you wash them in hot water with a little bit of dish soap. After they dry completely, you can replace them back into your vacuum. Meanwhile, while the filters are drying, you can hand wash any removable parts that may be filled with dust. Warm water and dish soap are sufficient to get these clean. If any of your vacuum parts are dusty but not removable, you can use car detailing brushes like these. The various sizes are great for reaching into the narrow areas of any dust cups and the corners where the filters nest. Remember, the shelves and drawers of your refrigerator and freezer are tempered to handle cold temperatures. Washing any of the fixtures in hot water could result in cracking the material. So all you need to do to clean your refrigerator and freezer is remove any removable parts and let them get to room temperature while you clean the inside of the refrigerator and freezer. For particularly grimy messes, I grab a bowl of warm water and dish soap and a sponge to scrub down the insides of the refrigerator and freezer. For any mild messes, I use my homemade all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth. After cleaning the inside of the refrigerator and freezer, I wash the removable shelves and drawers with warm water and dish soap. Before replacing the fixtures back into the refrigerator and freezer, you want to make sure everything is dried off completely so that your refrigerator and freezer don't become too humid. This is another area in our home we can easily forget to clean, and there is a super easy routine to get it squeaky clean so that you don't have to pause and take notes. I have all these steps available for you in the description box below. First, I boil water. While that comes to a boil, I grab my degreaser and spray down my entire range hood. Once the water boils, I pour it over my filter. I add baking soda. The amount you add will depend on the size of your filter. Then I add about a teaspoon of juice soap and I leave the filters to soak for about 15 minutes. While the filter soaks, I scrub down my range hood with a scrub sponge. Then I use wet paper towels to remove the loosened grease and grime until squeaky clean. You do not want to use microfiber cleaning cloths to remove grease as the grease will ruin the cloths. After that's all clean, I return to my filter and scrub with a scrub brush if needed. I rinse it well, then shake off the excess water and allow it to air dry. And that didn't require much scrubbing at all, it actually brushed away really easily. A simple cleaning solution recipe for cleaning tile grout and caulking involves mixing baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. This recipe I actually got from Brittany Basseur in her video on the many uses of hydrogen peroxide. You simply make a thick paste, brush it on to the areas you want to clean, and let it sit for 30 minutes. Use a cleaning toothbrush and scrub away. Rinse well and dry everything off. For caulking that is prone to mold and mildew, you can apply Melaleuca essential oil, which treats and prevents mold and mildew growth. After vacuuming and dusting, dampen a Mr. Clean magic eraser sponge and gently scrub away. So that you don't have to remember all these steps, I share how to deep clean your pillows and remove spots from your mattress in the link in the description box below. After spot cleaning your mattress, you will dust a very thin layer of baking soda over the surface. I like to add lavender essential oil to the baking soda which I place in a fine sieve. Then I gently tap the sieve over the entire surface of the mattress. I let this sit for several hours and then vacuum it all up. For any toss pillows you have that aren't washable, you can place them in a plastic bag and set them in the freezer overnight. This will kill dust mites and bacteria. Otherwise, for your washable pillow inserts, you can wash them like you would your bed pillows. Since throw blankets are made of various materials, you will follow the care instructions on the tag provided. For mine, I just use my homemade laundry detergent, washing with warm water, rinsing with cold, and hanging to dry. Running your vacuum with a brush attachment over your curtains is all it takes to dust them. For blinds, you will turn them upward and wipe upward with the microfiber cloth. Then turn them downward and wipe downward. If needed, you can clean with an all-purpose cleaning solution and a microfiber cloth. For the windowsills, I brush with a car detailing brush while vacuuming. Then give a good cleaning with my glass cleaner and a microfiber cloth. Remember, you can choose one day a week to do one or two of these eight monthly tasks. Now let's get into eight cleaning tasks you must do on a quarterly or seasonal basis. You can choose one day a month to do one or two of these eight quarterly tasks. 
one day each quarter, you can tackle your bathroom drawers and cabinets, and on another day, you can tackle your kitchen drawers and cabinets. Clean the insides of your drawers and cabinets, remembering to wash any organizers in warm, soapy water. I also share how to clean the tops of your cabinets while you're cleaning inside your cabinet in a link in the description box below. For your kitchen appliances, large and small, you're going to want to follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to clean these properly. If you haven't noticed in my studio tour, I actually don't have an oven, but I've cleaned ovens before and these are my best tips on how to clean them properly. If you have a self-cleaning oven, that is the best way to clean your oven. You're going to remove the racks that you actually need to hand wash, but the oven itself you can set to self-clean. And once that's done, all you have to do is wipe out the remaining ash. And for the rest of your oven, these are a lot of steps. But remember, I have all of this listed for you in the description box below. So what you will do is you will take your oven racks and place towels in the bottom of your tub and then place the racks on top. And then you need just enough hot water to cover the tops of your racks. Add about one half to one cup of dish soap and sprinkle an even layer of baking soda over the racks. You're gonna leave them to soak for at least six hours and you might as well just let them soak overnight. And after they finish soaking, you're gonna grab a small bowl of baking soda and a scrub sponge and return to your oven racks. You're going to give them a thorough scrub. You're gonna rinse them well Check out the excess water and towel dry. And if you don't have a self-cleaning oven, you're gonna mix four parts baking soda to one part water. Coat the dirtiest parts of your oven with a thick layer of the paste and let it sit for 30 minutes. You're gonna scrub with a scrub sponge and remove the loosened grime with paper towels. You don't wanna use microfiber cleaning cloths again to remove grease because this will ruin the cloths. Then you're gonna spray it on your oven with vinegar to remove the remaining baking soda. Again, wipe it all down with rags or paper towels. Gather your fans, space heaters, air purifiers, and humidifiers. Grab some cleaning brushes and your vacuum, along with the detail attachment. Remove any washable filters and follow your manufacturer instructions on how to clean them properly. Vacuum the loosened dust from the body of your appliance. Then grab an all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cleaning cloth. And wipe down your appliances by spraying the cloth with your all-purpose cleaner and then wiping down your appliances. If your filters have been washed, when they are completely dry, that's when you can reassemble your appliances. Whether it's a clothing closet, linen closet, or coat closet, choose one and get started. Empty out the closet, give it a vacuum, and wipe down. Then get to the dresser in the same room where you just cleaned the closet and empty it one drawer at a time, vacuuming and dusting the insides. This is a great task to do simultaneously while cleaning out your kitchen drawers and cabinetry, your bathroom drawers and cabinetry, and your closets. I highly suggest dropping off your donations immediately after a purge. So after completing task number five, find your nearest donation center and immediately drop off your donations. I share how to donate your items safely during the pandemic, which I will link in the description box below. If you want to sell your items, I share all about that in the annual cleaning test in the next section. For those with single level homes, you'll just hose down your windows and use a squirt of dish soap in a bucket of water and use a scrub sponge or scrub brush depending on how dirty your windows are. Give them a good scrub, rinse them completely and then use a squeegee to get remove the excess water and then a glass cleaner and a glass cleaning microfiber cloth. You want to do this when the weather isn't so hot so early morning or late evening so that you don't get streaks on your windows from the hot sun drying them too quickly. For multi-level homes you can actually purchase a window spray that you attach to your hose and it allows you to clean your windows without even having to scrub them. I will actually link a product for you in the description box below. Depending on how cluttered your garage is, I know that this may feel like a daunting task. I have free organizing guidelines for you in my freebie library linked in the description box below. If you can still park in your garage, then tidying your garage about once a quarter will help to maintain it. You're just going to tidy up all of the things that have accumulated over the season and give everything a good dusting. And if you can't park in your garage, then you can decide to take an hour or so or a day as often as you can to declutter and organize your garage. 
And again, you can use my free organizing guides in my freebie library to help guide you through the process. You can choose to sort one section at a time or a category at a time, but no matter which uh, method you choose, as long as you keep doing little by little, in no time you'll have your garage back and be able to park in it again. Now let's get into the eight cleaning tasks you must do on an annual basis. You can choose one day a month to do one or two of these eight annual tasks. Once a year, you will want to take down your curtains and shears and launder them according to the care instructions provided by the manufacturer. Remember, one of our monthly cleaning tasks is to dust our window treatments and clean our window sills. Once a year is when you give your window treatments a deep clean by washing and drying them. Hiring professionals to deep clean your carpets and upholstery can be an excellent investment once a year. And for us do-it-yourselfers, a carpet shampooer can be a worthwhile investment. Whether you purchase one to keep at home or rent from a grocery store or a hardware store. I actually have my carpet shampooer at my mom's house in San Diego. But I'm going to show you how you can clean your carpets by hand as well. I'm also going to share important tips for using a carpet shampoo yourself. Contrary to popular belief, you actually don't need as much cleaning solution in general for anything that you clean, but especially for carpet. When too much cleaning solution is used on carpets, it can leave behind a residue that actually attracts dirt and leaves your rugs and carpets worse than when they started. So to properly clean your rugs and prevent dirt from building up in the future, here are simple steps to get your rugs and carpets cleaned. Vacuum your rugs and carpets thoroughly. If you have a beater bar function on your vacuum, you can flip your rugs and beat the dirt out. You can also go old school and hang your rugs outside and beat them with a bat or a broomstick. This is only necessary on higher pile rugs. Low pile rugs are fine with a thorough vacuuming. If your rugs and carpet aren't visibly dirty, you can actually just fill your shampooer with hot water. And if your rugs and carpets are visibly dirty, you can add OxyClean. So depending on how dirty your rugs and carpets are, you're going to add one or multiple scoops. And you'll spray in the forward motion to release the spray onto the carpet. And go in the backward motion as many times as possible to remove the excess water. And if you did use OxyClean, you're going to fill your shampoo again with hot water and repeat these steps. And of course, allow your carpets and rugs to dry properly before you replace your furniture on top. If you do not hire a professional cleaner or use a carpet shampoo yourself, you can do these steps to clean your carpets by hand as soon as a stain happens or to do an overall surface clean. Simply fill a bowl with hot water, add OxyClean for particularly dirty rugs and carpets, and use an iron handle brush to scrub the surface of your rugs and carpets. You will want to use as little of the solution as possible to prevent oversaturating the rugs and carpet. If you do use OxyClean, be sure to follow up with a bowl of just hot water and an iron handle brush to try and rinse the OxyClean. Again, you will use as little water as possible to prevent oversaturating the rugs and carpet. Press the rugs and carpet dry with towels. Allow to air dry completely before replacing furniture. Once a year, you will want to deep clean your HVAC or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Hiring a professional is an excellent investment to make sure you're doing this properly. To start and evaluate your air ducts to see if you even need to get them clean, grab a detail cleaning brush or old toothbrush and grab your vacuum and a detail attachment. So you're gonna go to all of the vents around your home, including the exhaust fans in your bathrooms. And if you can, you will remove the vent covers with a screwdriver. Inside of the vents, you will vacuum out as much as you can. And if you can't reach anything properly, then you will need to hire a professional because they will have the tools that we as regular consumers do not have to do this properly. And after you clean what you can from the inside, you're going to go back to your vent covers. While brushing the dust off these vent covers with your detail brush, simultaneously vacuum the loosened dust. If this is difficult to do simultaneously, simply brush the loose dust first and then follow up with your vacuum. Grab an all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cleaning cloth. Instead of spraying the vents directly, spray your cleaning cloth and then wipe down your vents. And then just go ahead and replace your vent covers if you have removed them. Depending on the material of your outdoor furniture, you're going to follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to clean them. In general, for most surfaces, you can use an iron handle brush and a bucket of soapy water to deep clean your outdoor furniture. And throughout the seasons that you use your outdoor furniture, you're just going to give it a quick wipe down whenever you want to take a seat. 
And during the seasons that you don't use your outdoor furniture, that's when you will store any loose cushions away from the elements. And protect your furniture with furniture covers. Depending on when you are watching this, we may need to continue to practice safe social distancing. In that case, you will sell your items through apps like OfferUp and LetGo and not have a garage sale. In the description box below, I will share a link that shows you all about how to organize a successful garage sale. After your garage sale, this is the perfect time to gather everything that hasn't sold and drop it off at your nearest donation center. Do not even think about keeping these items to sell again. You will likely go a whole year with these items taking up valuable real estate in your home. I am telling you, you will feel so good after you remove clutter from your home. So drop off those donations immediately. First, be careful. I don't suggest moving the refrigerator yourself and injuring yourself and or damaging your appliance. Be sure you have help and carefully nudge your refrigerator, oven, and any other appliances you are able to move away from the wall. You will need enough space to clean the back of the appliance and behind and around and underneath where it was sitting. You'll just simply vacuum up any large debris and spray a degreaser on all of the surfaces and give everything a good scrub down with a scrub sponge or a scrub brush and then rinse and dry everything thoroughly. Throughout the year, hopefully you are recycling everything that you can regularly, but it is important to note that there are some items that you can't put in a regular recycling bin. Electronics, like computers for example, must be brought to specialized recycling locations. Also, baby items like car seats must be brought to specialized recycling locations as well. Did you know that car seats expire? In general, for anything that a regular recycling center won't take, you're just going to look up how to recycle so and so and then find your nearest recycling center. There is no need to hold on to these items that are obsolete because about once a year you might get some kind of new device or upgrade your baby gear. So free yourself from the clutter and get rid of these items at least once a year. Make sure you're doing it as ecologically friendly as possible. Just like the garage, depending on how cluttered your attic and basement are, I understand that this might be a daunting task. Again, I have free organizing guidelines for you in my freebie library, which is linked below. In this case, I'm referring to an attic or basement that isn't used for living space, but more like storage space. So once a year, you will tidy and clean these areas that you probably don't access frequently, but could use a good cleaning. And if these areas are quite cluttered and have limited accessibility, then you will do the same like I suggested for your garage and you will declutter and organize as much as you can as frequently as you can. And again, you can use my organizing guidelines in my freebie library to help guide you through the organizing process and eventually you'll have these areas fully accessible again. Now let's get into the details on how to use this free weekly cleaning routine chart. First, let me show you how to easily access the details of how to clean each area of your home through this form. After you download the chart, you will notice that you can click on the daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual task tiles. These links will take you to the corresponding blog posts which tell you exactly how to clean each of the areas noted in each section. That way, you don't have to remember every detail on how to clean each area, especially when you are about to do a quarterly cleaning task of which the details on how to clean your oven can easily be forgotten. So I like to keep this download in my phone and click on the links whenever I need to remember the steps on how to clean a specific area. You can also print this and put it into a document frame. I still suggest keeping the download in your phone or on your computer so that you can easily click on the links as needed. And if you are wondering, I have a completed form for you to download along with a free blank form which you can customize yourself. In your frames list, you can use a dry erase marker to fill in the monthly, quarterly, and annual tasks. You can also color code who in your household is responsible for each task by using a different color marker for each person. Now, I will go over how to schedule the monthly, quarterly, and annual cleaning tasks now. You will see here that you have up to 5 daily cleaning tasks, and here you have up to 6 weekly cleaning tasks, which can be scheduled one on each day. Notice here that there are weeks numbered 1 through 5. You will enter the dates of the Saturdays this month. For example, August 2020 has the following Saturday dates. There can be 4 or 5 Saturdays in a month. Here you will fill in the monthly, quarterly, and annual tasks you will complete each week over the month. 
you just enter the number of the tasks in each of these cells. Notice how I have noted here that you will schedule one to two monthly tasks each week. And also you will schedule one to two quarterly and annual tasks each month. So you are scheduling between eight to 10 tasks, two tasks per week per month. For your monthly tasks, which are numbered one through eight, you will enter numbers one through eight here on whatever week you want to accomplish these monthly tasks. Now, notice here that you have up to 16 total quarterly and annual tasks to complete. Eight quarterly and eight annual. Being that there are 12 months in the year, you only need to schedule one to two of these 16 tasks per month. You can enter any of the numbers nine through 24 here to signify which quarterly and annual tasks you will complete this month. For example, let's say you want to do a declutter of the kids outgrown clothes and toys and then donate them afterward. You will enter 13 and 14 on the weeks you plan to take care of these tasks. So there you go, you are able to get to cleaning every nook and cranny of your house on an annual basis. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You subscribing, liking, and commenting on my video helps my video to move up in the algorithm so other people can find it. In my next series of videos, I'll be taking you through how I organize each area of my tiny studio, starting with my office, which includes my daughter's art supplies, my office supplies and craft supplies, along with my paper filing system. So until my next video, happy organizing! Do a normal face!